How to Exercise, Aerobic or Anaerobic The notion that physical activity keeps us healthy is a very old concept indeed. Hippocrates wrote about the dangers of having too little activity and too much food. Tai Chi, an exercise system of graceful movements that originated in China, dates back to 12th century BC. Yoga's roots in India go back much further. A deluge of studies later have documented their health benefits. Many are observational, which always pose the problem of not showing proof of cause and effect. But these studies suggested that there is a connection between exercise and health. Results from various randomized clinical trials also point to exercise making people healthier. What's impressive is the number of conditions exercise seems to prevent, ameliorate, or delay. The American Heart Association promulgated the country's first set of exercise guidelines in 1972. If you're physically active, your heart gets trained to beat slower and stronger. Therefore it needs less oxygen to function well. Arteries get springier, so they push your blood along better. Levels of good HDL cholesterol go up. Physical activity helps prevent diabetes too. Muscles stay more receptive to insulin, the hormone that ushers blood sugar into cells. Fit individuals' blood sugar levels aren't likely to go up steeply. Exercise helps in the war against cancer. It seems to be, and on several fronts, breast, colon, endometrial, perhaps ovarian. The effect of physical activity on breast cancer prevention may be stronger after menopause than before. Some research suggests that it takes quite a lot to make a difference. 4 to 7 hours of moderate to vigorous activity a week. If you've had colon cancer or breast cancer, physical activity reduces the chances of its relapse. To top things off, moving the body seems to help the brain. Exercise can reduce the symptoms of depression. It changes the brain in ways similar to antidepressant medications. In old age, physical activity may delay the slide of cognitive decline into dementia. Even if that process has started, exercise can improve certain aspects of thinking. Skin health. It can help skin health too. Your skin can be affected by the amount of oxidative stress in your body. Oxidative stress occurs when the body's antioxidant defenses cannot repair the cell damaged by free radicals. This can damage the structure of the cells and negatively impact your skin. Intense and exhaustive physical activity can contribute to oxidative damage. But regular moderate exercise can actually increase your body's production of natural antioxidants. They in turn can help protect the cells. Further, exercise can stimulate blood flow and induce skin cell adaptations. They can help delay the appearance of skin aging. Aerobic and anaerobic are terms used to describe how cells within the body produce energy and refer to energy systems. But what is the difference? Every movement we make requires energy to be created. There are three main ways that this is done, one with oxygen and two, and three, without oxygen. Aerobic means with air and refers to the body producing energy with the use of oxygen. This typically involves any exercise that lasts longer than two minutes in duration. Continuous steady state exercise is performed aerobically. Anaerobic means without air and refers to the body producing energy without oxygen. This is typically an exercise that is performed at a higher intensity. There are two ways that the body can produce energy anaerobically. Energy bursts and slow release. Spin class. One anaerobic energy system is known as the ATP-CP system. It provides immediate energy for instantaneous burst of exercise such as for a throw, sprint or jump. It can last from 0 to 10 seconds. The other anaerobic system is known as the lactic acid system. It provides energy for very hard efforts lasting roughly 10 to 120 seconds. It is associated with the feeling of burning in your muscles. It is due to the buildup of lactate and other metabolites within your muscles. Energy When you are exercising energy will be derived from all three systems. But the emphasis will change depending on the intensity of the exercise relative to your fitness levels. Aerobic training will typically fall in the range of 60 to 80 percent of your estimated maximum heart rate. It can be done continuously for prolonged periods of time. 
anaerobic training will fall between 80 to 90% of your estimated maximum heart rate. But if you push very hard, you may not be able to continue to exercise at the same intensity. You may have to drop back to the mainly aerobic energy production system. What are the two training types good for? Aerobic training is good for building endurance and improving your cardiovascular and respiratory function. This means that your heart and lungs become stronger and more efficient. It enables you to train harder and longer as your fitness levels improve. Anaerobic training is performed at a harder intensity than aerobic exercise. It is typically between 80 to 90% of your maximum heart rate. Nine. It is a fantastic way of improving your fitness levels once a baseline aerobic level of fitness is achieved. Why anaerobic exercise is better for fat loss. Aerobic exercise, or steady state cardio, is performed at a steady, low to moderate pace. This utilizes slow twitch muscle fibers. It is great for cardiovascular conditioning and improving muscular endurance. It does use a higher percentage of fat for energy as opposed to muscle glycogen. But the total amount of energy burned at this level is lower than during anaerobic exercise for a given period of time. This means that for most people, extended periods of aerobic exercise are needed to achieve significant fat loss. This often results in a plateau. Anaerobic exercise is performed in the form of High Intensity Interval Training HIIT. Here you rotate high intensity intervals with recovery intervals. This is beneficial for several reasons. Save time. First, you can get in an intense workout in a fraction of the time. If time is a limitation for you, a heat session is a great option. You'll exhaust your muscles and burn more calories than you would in the same amount of time doing steady state cardio. Burn calories. Burn more calories. Second, you'll burn more calories in that amount of time. At the end of the day, the harder your workout is, the more calories you'll burn. Your caloric expenditure will be higher than if you had just walked or casually rode your bike. Increase metabolism. Third, you'll build muscle and increase your metabolism. Heat requires your fast twitch muscle fibers to engage in exercises like sprinting, plyometric, and weightlifting. This increases muscular size and strength. This means you'll be increasing muscle mass. This will in turn speed up your metabolism as muscle burns more calories than fat. The afterburn effect. Fourth, you'll experience the afterburn effect. The afterburn effect's scientific name is excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, EPOC. EPIC is the amount of oxygen required to return the body to its resting state. Heat sessions stimulate a higher EPIC. You consume more oxygen during heat and it creates a larger deficit to replace post-workout. This means you'll continue to burn calories even after your heat session is over. Physical exercise is one of the most effective methods to help prevent cardiovascular disease. Aerobic and anaerobic exercises differ based on the intensity, interval and types of muscle fibers incorporated. More than 250,000 yearly deaths in the US are attributed to cardiovascular disease resulting from a lack of physical activity. On the other hand, physical inactivity is estimated to cause 30% of ischemic heart disease. The association between physical inactivity and CV disease gained a foothold in the medical community in 1996. The American Heart Association published information advocating the benefit of physical exercise. It was with regard to improvements in hemodynamic, hormonal, metabolic, neurological and respiratory function. The inherent advantages of physical exercise stem from an increase in the cardiac output. It also enhances the innate ability of muscles to extract and to utilize oxygen from the blood. This benefit is in addition to the benefit physical exercise has on high-density lipoprotein cholesterol HDLC. It further ensures adipose tissue distribution, increased insulin sensitivity, improved cognitive function. It enhances response to psychosocial stressors, as well as determinative depression. Aerobic or anaerobic? The question remains which type of exercise provide is more effective. The American College of Sports Medicine defines aerobic exercise as any activity that uses large muscle groups. They are activities that can be maintained continuously and rhythmic in nature. 
As the name implies, muscle groups activated by this type of exercise rely on aerobic metabolism. It extracts energy in the form of adenosine triphosphate ATP, from amino acids, carbohydrates and fatty acids. Examples of aerobic exercise include cycling, dancing, hiking, jogging slash long distance running, swimming and walking. Various studies prove the advantages of aerobic exercise in reversing and preventing CV disease. Furthermore, aerobic exercise has been shown to have a positive impact on other dimensions of CV health. Several studies have shown that aerobic exercise improves the lipid profile, particularly increasing the HDLC. In an Australian study, aerobic exercise led to a small but statistically significant reduction in total cholesterol. It also lowers low-density lipoprotein cholesterol and triglycerides. They also showed an increase in HDLC with their aerobic exercise program. While aerobic exercise appears to have some beneficial effects, its contribution is limited on frequency and quantity. A study by a Danish group reports a U-shaped association between aerobic exercise and mortality. Their research quantified 1 to 2.4 hours of exercise over 2 to 3 times per week as the optimal quantity and frequency. It is a standard of aerobic exercise to promote improved health. Interestingly, they quantified any amount above that standard as being indifferent to the mortality risk. It was equivalent to that of sedentary individuals. Anaerobic exercise has been defined by the ACSM as intense physical activity of very short duration. It was fueled by the energy sources within the contracting muscles. It was independent of the use of inhaled oxygen as an energy source. Without the use of oxygen, our cells revert to the formation of ATP via glycolysis and fermentation. This process produces significantly less ATP than its aerobic counterpart and leads to the buildup of lactic acid. Anaerobic exercise consists of fast twitch muscles. It includes sprinting, high-intensity interval training, power lifting, etc. Anaerobic exercise causes a sustained increase in lactate and metabolic acidosis. This transition point is referred to anaerobic threshold. Anaerobic exercises too have been shown to have a positive influence on the lipid profile. Aerobic plus anaerobic. A European study shows increased benefits of an aerobic workout followed by anaerobic training. Subjects with both aerobic and anaerobic exercises showed a larger reduction in non-esterified fatty acids. The same group was also found to have the greatest reduction in their body mass index. There are speculations about disadvantages of such an exercise program. One such shortcoming was brought to light by an Iranian study published by Manchuri et al. It concluded that anaerobic training led to a significant reduction in human growth hormone, HGH. Long-standing HGH deficiencies can attribute to CV morbidity and mortality. It occurs through the development of premature arthrosclerosis. How often should you do aerobic or anaerobic exercise? The American Heart Association recommends healthy adults get at least 30 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise. It should be at least for 5 days a week, or at least 25 minutes of vigorous aerobic activity 3 days a week. You can also add in strength training 2 times a week to round out your routine. Anaerobic exercises can be taxing on the body. With a doctor's approval anaerobic exercises can be added into your weekly exercise routine. Conclusion Exercise helps to deter CV morbidity and mortality. Both aerobic and anaerobic exercises have unique and collective positive correlations towards improved CV health. Further studies are still warranted to determine if there is superiority of one type of exercise over another.